Hello everybody and welcome back to the Med Bros channel and today we have Core Beauty here. Hi guys. And we're going to be going over a very interesting series. I've been planning to do this, but finally we got together here in person to finally go ahead and shoot this video. We're going to call this series, Should This Doctor Slash Medical Student Lose Their License? Okay. So this is going to be part one and we're going to go through stories and you guys can play along with us on some insane cases, on some ins insane scenarios that have played out regarding medical students and doctors. And we're going to be the judge should these people lose their license and not be able to practice ever again based on the things that they've done? Okay? okay. So it's going to be very interesting, probably very juicy, and we're going to get right into Yay. our first case. All right. So we are going to go ahead and start with this case. This is video of a doctor throwing a patient out of office. Now, this is something you rarely ever see. Doctors throwing, usually... Throwing, not throwing. Well, verbally throwing them out, not oh. physically throwing them out. That we definitely don't see. Mm -hmm. But usually doctors are very calm, collected. They know how to handle difficult patients. We're going to go and see what this doctor did and what the story behind it is. So go ahead. You don't see this a lot, an angry confrontation between, of all people, a doctor and his patient. Go to the ER and wait for nine hours. Okay, you can get out of her out of my office. I will now. Die. Jessica Stipe was suffering from a severe case of the flu and waited one hour and 15 minutes as her symptoms grew worse. I made an appointment at 630 because I knew that being out of my bed an hour and, and 45 minutes. We've and already have been, been working on you. We've you done a in. urine test on you. I've Nobody's, seen you. You came in and said, I'm going to check your pee. I Does that take three problem. seconds, you think? I don't know how long Do you want to be seen or not? I want to go home and get in my bed. I'm then miserable. fine, get the hell out. Get your money and get the hell out. I did. But that See you right later. Is I'm livid. I'm yeah. livid. And it's not even, you know, it's the way he spoke to us. That was completely unethical and uncalled for. Jessica's 16 year old daughter, Courtney, recorded the drama at an after hours Go medical clinic in Gainesville, out. Florida. Yeah, you can get out of her out of my office. I will now. Make a complaint with a better business. Mom, I got it on video, so it doesn't matter. And then, Go. And my What's your daughter? What's your name? The doctor grabs the phone right out of the daughter's hand. Give me my phone. I told him my daughter's a minor and I'm calling the police. I did dial 911 at that time and he stopped my daughter's recording and threw her phone back down the hallway and cracked her screen. We do have these witness statements that I know you know about from people who are also there in the doctor's office. They're saying that uh, you were using profanity, not speaking nice to the doctors, threatening the staff. None of that is true. Um, like I said, the video is the only real mm. altercation that ever transpired. Dr. Peter Gallagher mm. says the patient was belligerent and abusive to the office staff. Still, he apologized, oh, saying in a statement, very interesting I discussion. my <laughs> temper and speaking to the two women in a manner that is not befitting a medical doctor. We showed the video to ER doctor Jake <laughs> Deutsch. Doctor I this think that that see. goes beyond what is considered acceptable in all standards. Um, certainly losing your temper is one thing, but using profanity and then having an altercation by hitting the phone just shows a total lack of control. So obviously a lot going on immediately. What are your first so reactions? First, I think we should decide yes or no lose the license and then we can elaborate. Okay, so you go first. I think the one contingency I would have to check is, is this a pattern of behavior? If it's the first time, then I would say no, he doesn't deserve to do this. I completely agree. That's a perfect way to analyze it. What is his history? Is this a first time offense? Was there more to the story? My current gut reaction is no, should not lose their license, but let's dive into it a little deeper. What did you, so what did you know? Based off of the in evidence of the video, I would say that's definitely not an appropriate way to talk to patients, no matter what, especially just given the, in, the evidence of she wasn't really belligerent and abusive in that clip. So there was no behavior in the video that warranted such a response. Mm -hmm. So, however, I will say the fact that he's saying he regrets his behavior is a lot because a lot of doctors honestly wouldn't regret behavior. Like it's actually, it takes a lot to say I shouldn't have done that. And some people just don't apologize. So in addition to that, if it is really unacceptable to abuse office staff and that happens way more than you think. Like mm -hmm. I have this new job where I'm next to schedulers. Bro, the amount of times I've hear, give me your supervisor, da 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 and they're mm -hmm. just doing their job and it's like unbelievable the amount of abuse staff gets too. So I understand standing up for your staff if there was a situation like that. 
It's really gray, but if this is a first time offense, I would say there's no way he should lose his license. Yeah, I agree with all of that. But at the same time, I also think there's a lot more to the story that's going on. Apparently the witnesses say that she was, you know, being yeah, abusive. Maybe the staff was experiencing something that, you know, the doctors are defensive of their staff at many times. You're very close to your staff. Mm -hmm. So maybe she was verbally abusing them and being inappropriate. And, um, and it seemed like he was saying that, you know, they're working with her. It seemed like they got the UA done. They were na analyzing the urine. They were doing things for her. I mean, and I totally understand her frustration. Her frustration, exactly. I was going to get to that. Yep. Um, like she seemed pretty calm yeah. in the video. Yeah. So it's really hard to paint her out as a villain too. Of course. But based off of different accounts, you almost wonder if she's missing something. Because even someone like me, if I had to recount someone talking to me like that, I would not paint myself as a <laughs> saint. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I did nothing wrong. Because granted, you're getting not treated well. You're going to stand up for yourself. And probably weren't a saint but uh yeah i would like to hear more like genuine like what happened with yeah, her side of things exactly i feel like there's some nefarious stuff going on so i give the benefit of doubt here i think a further investigation could be warranted here but definitely does not need yeah. to lose his license answer to this one is no let's move on to the next case okay this is fun i feel like a judge on the board half hour with the patient accusing the doctor of some bad bedside behavior and it was all caught on camera that patient complaining the doctor was physically and verbally abusive, refusing to believe he was suffering, even cursing at him. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in our L.A. bureau with the story. Marcy, good morning. Dan and Paula, good morning. That patient says the doctor accused him of going to the hospital in hopes of getting narcotics, and that, he believes, is what set her off. He tells us he was simply seeking treatment for what turned out to be an extreme anxiety attack. And he is still baffled by what happened next. Sit up. Sit up. Dude, sit, up. sit up. I'm having you sit up. I can't get up. This morning, this emergency room doctor banned from working in this Northern California hospital after she was caught on camera mocking and cursing at one of her patients. I knew from when she said something to the security guard, I already knew from that point. I said, hey, dad, can you please take out your phone? I need you to take out your phone now because I have a feeling something's going to happen. If I could get up off this chair, I really would. But yeah, you really should because this is ridiculous. I can't, and you're not going to keep you're tugging. Cool. Samuel Bardwell says he was rushed by ambulance to El Camino Hospital after collapsing during basketball practice Monday. After waiting more than three hours to be seen. I'm sorry, sir. You were the least sick of all the people who are here who are dying. He says he told the doctor he was numb, in extreme pain, and having trouble breathing. I just tried to inhale, and I even told her I could not inhale. <laughs> he, he can't inhale. Wow. He must be dead. Are you dead, sir? I don't understand. You are breathing just I mean, this is not... Bardwell tells ABC from there the tension with Dr. Beth Keegstra escalated unprovoked. No, you have changed your story every time. Whoa. The hospital CEO saying in a statement that the physician's demeanor was unprofessional and not the standard we require of all who provide care through El Camino Hospital. We've expressed our sincere... I think I've seen this okay. one. Okay, what do you think about out. this one? Yeah. I think I saw this clip when it came out. It just kind of jogged my memory. Okay. So, Thoughts. starting with our yes or no's. Again, for me, I will explain why, but I will say no to losing the license. Go ahead. This is a hard one. It's a hard okay, one. Okay, so I would one. say, again, look for a pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. If it's there, yes, done for, banned. Like, she's done. If there's not, I don't think she should get off scot-free like maybe the first guy would. Mm -hmm. I think she should mm -hmm. still suffer punishment. Like maybe she shouldn't be allowed to work in ERs anymore because ERs are very, uh, very, like maybe, maybe she she's could. An ER doctor, I know, but right. maybe she could do like, I don't know, urgent care, or like yeah, off, off brand, like MD consulting or some, hmm. something like, like something that. Like something away from patients? Yeah, something like something away contact? from direct patient contact or hmm. be on probation or hmm. suspension or something like that. Like, yeah, here's my thought on this. So my thing is, it turned out this man had an anxiety attack. And for doctors, it can be very frustrating when patients come into your ER, especially in the ER. Things are very busy. Things yeah. are very chaotic. There are people that actually need attention. And then when patients like this come in, while they do need attention, while they do need their things addressed, when you get an EKG, you look at their enzymes, you look at all their all the kind of lab values, everything looks normal, they don't have a fever. Everything is coming back normal, but the patient is still complaining of symptoms. That puts you as a doctor in a very difficult position, yeah. especially when you're sitting in front of this patient and he did appear, from what we can see in the video, to be in a state that is fine. He's breathing yeah. okay, he's comfortable in bed, there's no acute issues, there's no you know acute thing that we can address, the lab values are coming back. Yeah. I see the doctor's frustration with yeah. that. Now, 
as usual in these scenarios, you cannot act that way as a doctor. Absolutely yeah. not. Again. I think honestly, there are certain statements in there that if they were not said, would simply just be viewed as a doctor who's frustrated, whose mm -hmm. ER is overflowing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be excusable from the perspective of almost all physicians in the United States. Um, but there were certain statements, for example, saying, oh, this is effing ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You can sit up. I'm sorry. There were other people who were dying. Like you can't excuse a patient's pain and suffering because they still got up and came to the ER. Like yeah. they are in enough suffering to come to the ER. And granted, of course, like Herman said, there are definitely moments when the ER physicians for sure understandably get tired when they're tending to all these people. And then somebody comes in with a anxiety attack, which is important to address. But in that moment, he didn't look like he needed like benzos or anything like serious. Exactly. So it's hard, but that behavior was far worse than like even the first one. Yeah, it was very dismissive, very rude. Very, very awful. Yeah, so definitely consequences for this one. I completely agree with you for on. For sure, 100%. Um, and I think banning her from this branch and all these people are teaching her a lesson, all that kind of stuff, that's that's probably the right move to go. In terms of losing her license, though, what I mean yeah. is I think she can grow and learn from this. And it does seem like she knows what's going on as a doctor um, and from the medical perspective. And hopefully you will kind of turn that around. Um, yeah, so I would never want to have her be my doctor. Though, I know. That's for sure. <laughs> if you guys have, if hopefully by this time this video will be up on this channel, and I will, I have also reacted to episode one of the resident, which was wild. So make sure you guys check that out if you guys haven't seen that already. Now, this whole situation, by the way, before I move on to the next one, could have easily been fixed by literally just talking to the patient nice in a, in a, and explaining, in a, hey, you know, you're coming in. I understand you're concerned. I understand you're in discomfort. Your lab values look okay. This is what we can offer. This is what we can do going forward. So. But it's interesting because she's accused the guy of seeking narcotics. Did he ask for narcotics? That's another, again, it doesn't see in the video. That's what the, is being claimed. It's very easy for the patient perspective. Even me as an incoming med student, I sometimes would be like, oh, all these doctors are accusing people of narcotics. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel so bad for this person. Like, they're really in pain. And then you come to find out they really are drug seekers. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of drug seekers in this country, way more than even I, as a first, second year med student knew. So whether that even be intentionally or anything malicious mm -hmm. when we use the word drug seeker or somebody that has been failed by the system is now unhooked on drugs, which yeah. is a whole different set of issues. Yeah. So again, incomplete snip into the story, but yeah, but from what we can see, okay, yeah. so we're going to have two more. Uh, this is one that we we have both seen this one before. We have to react to this one. I haven't seen the ones Herman picked, so. Yeah, yeah, this one we've seen before, and I'm, I would be shocked if you guys out there, at least that are familiar with the medical field, are not familiar right, with. Let me see what the hell you're talking about. Doctor suspended after every. Oh, God. This is my first this honest is case used that I've ever in our seen. Orientation. Oh, really? Yeah, to show ethical behavior. Okay. So and they actually will... divided us and said what side we would be on. And it was actually a conflict in my group. Okay, so let's like, see. Anyways, okay, let's go. I feel like there's going to be a conflict here, too. Can you call 911, please? She's getting yeah, wild. Call 911. Oh, yeah. <laughs> call 911. Call 911. A woman attacks an Uber driver for refusing to. Oh, look at her clench. Teeth and her fish she wants this guy's blood. Yeah, seriously, yeah, get some help. Then she tries to knee him in the Oh, she got oh in the knee to the No, we gotta go back, bro. Hold on. There's too much going on here. Hold on, we're restarting. A woman attacks an Uber driver for refusing to give her a ride. Clench. She oh, she's him. Not for seriously? Yeah, seriously, yeah, get some help. Then she tries to knee him in the you know what. Hey dog, she go MMA, man. You may be surprised to hear what the 30-year-old woman does for a living. She's a Miami doctor, oh a neurology God. resident. Wait, is she a resident? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting to Hold see on, her in white coat. And also in a sexy bikini. Okay, that was weird. It all started that was weird. Wait, jumped did you just get Why was that included? There's biases. Like, that has something to do with her, I don't know, qualifications. Like, ooh, she's also doing that. Stupid. The Uber car ahead of another passenger who had ordered it first. The video was taken by that passenger. Oh, what the heck? After kneeing the driver <laughs> the and getting so thrown funny. down. <laughs> Dr. Anjali Ramkasun is far from done with the driver. She gets right up and goes into the car, screaming. <laughs> then, as the driver calls for help, she sarcastically mocks him. I'm a five-foot girl that weighs 100 pounds. I'm getting really, like, belligerent right now. Her tantrum continues. She throws whatever she can find out the window. Bunches and bunches of papers. 
Bro, you yes, lost your mind. I have lost my mind. She even tosses scissors at the driver. Oh. This is just the latest video doing? of a passenger going nuts on an Uber driver. Uh, get the you probably Shit. remember this California what executive is, what, did, what, did, what did that come from? Bro, you know what? Hard to believe he's now suing the Uber driver for five Oh my god! Like, this is a they're just they're destroying this man! I guess that's it! I guess I'll see the crime scene. Bye! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> She's insane! That might have been one of the biggest train wrecks I've ever seen happen to a doctor, just Whatever in general. To her. She did lose her license, I feel like. Yeah, she was fired. But fired is different than losing your license. Well, she was a resident. Once you get fired, she's not being picked up by any other residency and program. You know, I remember learning about this girl when I was, I think, an undergrad. And I just remember just being like, wow, fourth year resident. You were almost done, bro. For neurology, yeah. So yeah. she was a neurology resident, fourth year. I'm gonna get some heat for my opinion. Cause I got some heat for it when I said it in the small groups, uh -huh. when I first met my classmates. I didn't really get heat, but I was definitely in a different opinion than them. Unpopular opinion is I think a lot of medical students and residents in this country engage in behavior just like that, if not worse sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I've like seen a couple of it, like mm -hmm. a couple of instances of mm -hmm. it. And I think even in these situations where administration finds out about these actions, there's a lot more protection given to those students. And I think partly it has to do with hers being so publicized mm -hmm. and her being a minority. Yep. Realistically, that's the facts because you are ignorant if you don't think that, you know, if you think all medical students and residents are perfect and nobody in the country does st like stupid stuff like that. It's not okay. But I'm just saying that I think her consequences were not held to the same standard as, as what other people have gotten in this country. Yeah, and shockingly, I am going to agree. I maybe back in the I think years back. This happened years back, guys. And when I initially saw this, I was like, oh yeah, an idiot, lose your license. But once you're in this scenario and you've seen situations and you've yep. seen and you've gone yeah. through and you realize that doctors are just humans, they're mm -hmm. stupid, stupid, stupid people. Um, really, you can, I'm confident, follow the tips on this channel, subscribe, follow all that stuff, and we can make you a doctor. Anyone can be a doctor, really. So yeah. people that get through, especially you've seen the admissions committees fails on top of all of that, that they're just regular humans and they're going to make mistakes. And this is one of them that slipped through. And she had a moment. She had a moment where she messed up. Again, we look at the patterns. Filmed. Maybe she's doing this every single day. From what I understand, there's a one-time event. Um, but it was filmed and publicized. It was filmed, which publicized. Which is where the downfall just yeah, accelerated. It, yeah, it. and her situation was very magnified. This happens to situations similar to this and very much worse situations have happened to residents, people that, stories that I've heard personally as well. Medical students, surely lots of stories with medical students as well. Um, and, and, you know, things need to be taken as a case-by-case -case basis. The fact that nobody was hurt during the situation, the fact that, you know, um, this really doesn't, seem like it would be something that would cripple her actual job unless she has reports of this happening to patients. This might have had something to do with the reaction to her being intoxicated and maybe she reacts to alcohol differently. Everyone has a different, who knows what other things under the influence she was on. Long laundry list, whatever the yeah. case may be. Does this warrant a license loss on a fourth year resident who might have been, if we look She's at the really records. She's young and still learning. Yeah, and we look at the records, maybe she was doing her job great. She has great patient satisfaction. She's doing her, you know, duties because also i think the public is so misinformed on a couple things so like i said the standard everyone's not held to the same standard some people do way worse and get off scot-free some people do way less and get screwed like even less than her and i just think it's so off like there's no standard of what's acceptable it's all subjective yeah i mean i definitely am saying not saying her behavior is acceptable by any means it's at so all. unacceptable absolutely wrong but like herman said there's doctors who discriminate against certain groups of people, like are literally racist and are still out here, you know, mm -hmm. if that affects your patient care directly. Yeah. Um, so I think it definitely would be worth looking into if, you know, she actually has records of this. And I, if I was part of an administrative board, I wouldn't have made her lose her license. Yeah, I think there obviously should have been consequences. She yes. should have had to take a course. She should have been uh, suspended. Yeah. She should have had to go through loops to get back to where she was. Yeah. Um, but in terms of an overall termination, I, I don't agree with that in this case. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next and last case here. So this one is very near to me and it happened two weeks ago. 
So uh, I've actually been watching this clip for the first time. Now at nine, fake emails, threats to bomb her school campus, and a plan to kill her classmates. That is what led to the arrest of a med student in Glendale. Glendale, that's, that's like that's an yeah. hour from here. <laughs> Holy shit. What medical school was this? It must have been U of A. Midwest, no, Midwestern. Oh my I think it's, God. Yeah. People say they may know the reason why she made these awful threats. Our Brianna Whitney is live in the newsroom with what she found. Brianna, what can you tell us? Yeah, Whitney, these emails and text messages to school officials and other students are extremely disturbing and detailed. 29-year-old Mona Asadi claimed she had been plotting to kill her classmates since before COVID hit. Now released from jail, I tried to talk to her today about it all. This is her. We'd like to ask you just a couple questions. Not a word from Midwestern Medical Midwestern. School student Mona Asadi oh, Friday, shit. but according to this court paperwork, she had a whole lot to say just months ago, threatening to kill many of her classmates. Oh the paperwork says in April, the dean of the school called Glendale police because Asadi sent a text threatening to bomb the Glendale campus and that she was already on her way. Asadi denied it, but the dean told police she had been failing the medical board tests and if she failed one more time, she'd be kicked out of the school. Then earlier this month, police say Asadi's classmates started getting threatening messages from fake email accounts and unknown phone numbers. One of those was a mass email sent to 200 students about a plan to kill eight specific classmates for various what? reasons, writing she wanted to, quote, see the blood leave your body, and for another student wrote, hope your parents don't cry too much when I kill this you. This is wild. Court documents show some of those emails also made threats against Asadi, calling her sick in the head and a killer. That's when students started to suspect it was Asadi herself behind the messages. Some classmates were able to link her cell phone number to the fake email account and they flagged police. Police say Asadi had called them from that same cell phone number before and arrested her. We'd like to ask oh, you just careful. a couple questions. Now, car. left with nothing to say, her alleged plot was put to rest before anyone could get hurt. Oh my God, dude, that's a that's a problem waiting to happen. I still think that's a problem waiting to happen. Yeah, that is, I'm surprised she's out on um, bond. Yeah, that seems like she just How walked she off and drove off in a car after making a very clear bomb. Bro, very I'm clear. Say anything about her? She's out. <laughs> no, we will end that story right here. Yeah, we are gonna end that story right here. Okay, I'm. Asadi, if you're having trouble with the boards, go ahead and check out the med press <laughs> show. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. We're giggling because nobody got hurt, okay? Oh, it's definitely God. not something to joke about. No, this is definitely just terrifying. It's horrifying. But the only reason I think the silver lining is nobody has Yeah, she got hurt. caught. But got I, caught. I am also in awe and That's having crazy. this reaction because this lady is just walking away. That's you insane. made a specific threat with an idea mm -hmm. of, uh, and, and the will to carry out the idea throughout your, your text with specific targets. I want Say and I you just drove out with daddy. I want to say, I, this one's a no brainer. No, I yeah, think. no, this person should not be practicing medicine once these, uh, you know, I assume that they've already linked it, they've arrested her, she, her court cases and things will are probably hopefully still happen. I'm yeah. hoping she's not just walking free. No. She'll hopefully be stopped from pursuing medicine, but that opens up another problem where I still think that's a, that's a, that's a thing waiting to happen. What? Unfortunately, oh, you think on. she she was yeah, about to shoot people up because she, yeah, yeah she couldn't do the board. Now you're telling me she's never gonna practice medicine. Period. Because hopefully of this, hopefully she gets arrested before, or hopefully she gets the help. She, she gets needs. help she yeah. needs. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. gonna say. She needs, she needs mental help. help. She needs the support system. Her parents need to plug her in immediately. I'm sure everyone's grateful the classmates who were, you know, took the initiative and, and, yeah. and called something out when it was supposed to be called out. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's hard not to call someone out if you're one of those eight names, probably. Well, yeah, that's true, too. But I mean, turning on a classmate is tough, so. Well, why would you target a classmate? Because you're failing. Maybe because you're jealous that they're maybe passing? Also or like, maybe also, like, you know, some passive comments or people have maybe likes and dislikes issues. towards people. Anyways, but yeah, that one's pretty intense. That one's pretty clear cut, okay. guys. So this was a long-winded video. I have a few other cases, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a part two if this yeah. video gets a thousand likes. So make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe and comment down below. I know this one's going to have the comments going juicy on opinions. Let us know if you agree. Mm -hmm. Should these patients lose their license Please or don't not? Don't me. roast us for defending that last girl. I want to hear if you I guys... Got... I was the outlier when I said that in my group. Oh, really? And everybody was like, unacceptable, unacceptable. I was like, 
Let me put a bug on you when you're drunk at a party and see how perfect you are. Either way, we'll see if they can in the comments down below defend uh, having her lose her license. Maybe we'll be convinced. Go down in the comments down below. And guys, if you guys want the next one, hit the like button and we'll do a part two. So thank you guys for tuning into the MedBros channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.